Hi, today I'm going to be showing you how to modify this five and a quarter floppy drive for use with the Cryoflux product in order to be able to make preservation quality images off flippy disks. The drive I'm using is a Panasonic JU 475 5-5 AKJ floppy drive. So the first thing we want to do is prepare the drive uh, by, di by disassembling it down to the parts that we need. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the carrier card that protects the heads during transit. I'm going to set that aside for now because we're going to, we don't need it for now. The next thing that we need to do is remove this, uh, remove this protective shield over the heads and the circuit board. I do that by removing these three screws. On some versions of these drives, these screws are different sizes, so you need to make sure that you remember which one goes where. Set the shield aside for now. We'll put it back on later. Before we get started, let's take a look at the various parts of the drive that we're going to be modifying. The first thing that we're going to remove is going to be the circuit board. Um, we're going to take it completely off and we're going to need to cut some traces and solder some wires to it. Uh, this is the, the head carriage assembly. We're going to be modifying it in a couple of places. This is the track zero sensor. It's very important that you don't mess with it. We don't need to modify it at all and so it's if you mess it up or if you move it you're going to have to reset the track zero. So I'm going to remove the circuit, I'm going to remove the circuit board uh, by removing the wires, the, uh, the screws that hold it in were uh, almost removed except for this one. The connectors are all keyed uh, and friction fit, so uh, you don't really need to worry about marking them but if you're unsure at all that you'll be able to put them back on just mark them however you need to to make sure that you can put them back on the way that they were. Now that I've removed the wires, I just lift the circuit board aside, or lift the circuit board out, and set it aside for now. The next thing that we need to remove is the shield that covers the wire, that keeps the wires in place. Remove it and set it aside with the shield. Before we go any further, let's take a few minutes to go through the different parts of the drive that we're going to be uh, that we're going to be modifying, or that we need to remove. First, this is the drive head carriage. It's it rides on a single rail on the left side and on a lead screw attached to the stepper motor on the right. These two clamps hold the the drive rail in place, and the drive head carriage attaches to the lead screw simply by a, a little open-sided clamp. Uh, so when we remove this rail, this will just slide off uh, and detach from the lead screw. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the drive head carriage now so that we can take a look at it closer.
So I've removed the screws and now I'm just going to pull the clamps off using tweezers. I like to keep the orientation of the parts and put the same parts uh, the same the parts back in the same place where they came from so I keep track of of which clamp went on which side and then when I pull the when I remove the drive rail I'm also going to keep track of which wind was front and rear so to to remove the drive uh, rail and the drive head assembly I simply lift it up and just slide it out and the clamp will disengage from the lead screw. I'm going to set it aside for now and we'll come back and look at, it, look at it in a minute. Let's talk a little bit more about the lead screw and stepper motor. The stepper motor uh, just steps through discrete locations or, or positions uh, in a continuous manner um, and it relies on the drive hitting or indicating track zero using the track zero sensor to orient itself whenever you turn it back on. Um, so it's very important that during the course of these modifications you don't move the track zero sensor or move the position of the stepper motor forward and back or left and right. Um, this can cause a little bit of a problem because one of the places that we need to remove some metal is right here. So that's in pretty close proximity to the lead screw. So if you want to, if you don't feel comfortable in doing the modifications to, to this part with the lead screw in place, simply mark very carefully and very finely uh, with uh, making a scratch on exactly where uh, this the lead screw carriage is located and remove the screws, set the assembly aside, perform modifications and then when you reassemble it make sure that you line the the lead screw carriage up exactly in the exact same spot that it was before. If you don't do that then you're going to have to use an alignment disc to get it aligned properly. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a guard, a, a piece of metal, around this so that I can grind here and not inadvertently damage the lead screw.